Hey guys, Miss Delito here. We're going to take a look at how we solve an inequality. The nice thing about solving inequalities is it's really no different than solving an equation. The only difference is that we are going to use some different symbols rather than an equal sign. So we are going to use inverse or opposite operations to isolate the variable, which means get the variable by itself, which is the same process we use to solve an equation. So I'm going to start, I'm going to draw my lines around my inequality symbol. So we've got 2x is greater than or equal to 24. And again, we're going to start by using those inverse operations. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So 2x is greater than or equal to 20. Then I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. So x is greater than or equal to 10. One thing you want to pay careful attention to and big misconception and mistake that I see often is that often we jump from our inequality symbol and we get in that habit of writing the equal sign. So just make sure that you go back and you check that you've got the correct inequality symbol written in your solution. Now we can think about, we can check this solution. So we think about what are some possible solutions for x. In this case, we know x has to be greater than or equal to 10, so x can be 20. 20 is greater than or equal to 10. I can go back and I can actually check my solution by plugging in any of those possible values. So if x is 20, 2 times 20 is 40, plus 4 is 44. 44 is in fact greater than or equal to 24. We know that x could also be 10 because 10 is greater than or equal to 10. 2 times 10 is 20 plus 4 is 24. 24 is greater than or equal to 24. x could be 11 because 11 is greater than or equal to 10. 2 times 11 is 22 plus 4 is 26 which is greater than or equal to 24. Now we want to move on to graphing our solution. So the solution really is after we've isolated the variable. So in this case, our solution is x is greater than or equal to 10. So these are all of the possible solutions that we have for this inequality. I'm going to draw three values on my number line. I'm going to put 10 right in the middle, and we'll put 9 and 11 on either side. Because 10 is included in the possible values that x can be, I'm going to use a closed circle. And my arrow on my graph is going to point in the direction of all of the possible solutions. So we know if x has to be bigger than or equal to 10, all of those possible solutions are going to be to the right. So my arrow is pointing to the right on my number line. Let's take a look at another example. So in example 2, I have m divided by 3 minus 3 is less than or equal to negative 6. I go ahead and draw my lines in and use the process of inverse operations to solve. So we'll add 3 to both sides. So m divided by 3 is less than or equal to negative 3. Now to undo dividing by 3, we're going to multiply by 3 on both sides. So m is less than or equal to negative 9. Now we're going to graph our solution, and in this case, again, that solution is once we've isolated the variable or gotten that variable by itself, so our solution is m is less than or equal to negative 9. We're going to place our values on the number line. Especially when we have those negative numbers, we have to be careful that we're placing our values in the correct order. So we know that anything to the right of negative 9 has to be bigger than negative 9. Negative 8 is a bigger value. Anything to the left has to be smaller, so we have to pay careful attention there. So again, because negative 9 is included, because m is less than or equal to negative 9, I'm going to use a closed circle. And if any value of m has to be less than or equal to negative 9, that means all of our values are to the left of negative 9, therefore my arrow should be drawn to the left. Hopefully you guys got some help with solving your inequalities and understanding how to graph those solutions. If you leave a comment, I will enter you into a drawing to earn a homework pass. You can thank my period two class for that. See you guys soon.